How much do I make now? Like 250? A Canadian Liberal MP was caught on a hot mic discussing her own salary while voting down a wealth tax. Yes, this clip is incredibly embarrassing, and I'm also going to get into the wealth tax and how much support it has in Canada and exactly who voted for it and who voted this down. First here, though, here is the clip of Marion Monsef caught on a hot mic discussing her own salary during a vote on the wealth tax. Miss Wilson so, Raybold. The question they're going to ask me, how much do I make now? Like 250? I want to, re- I want to, I'm sorry, uh, Ms. Raybolt, I want to remind the Honourable Members to turn off their microphones when they're not voting. Wow. That is embarrassing. Caught on a hot mic discussing her own salary while voting down a wealth tax. A salary which, by the way, is pretty good compared to other Canadians. So first up here, from HuffPost, Maria Monsef, Minister for Women and Gender Equality and for Rural Economic Development. What a job title, considering you voted on a wealth tax. Left her microphone on during a vote on an NDP motion Monday, calling for a tax on Canadians with fortunes over $20 million and corporations that have been profiteering from the pandemic. Monsef voted virtually and against the motion, but then her voice popped up unexpectedly after Conservative, Bloc Québécois, NDP and Green MPs had their turns to vote, interjecting as independent MP Jody Wilson-Raybould's name was called, who also, by the way... Um, Replied to that video, saying, honestly, good grief. But this, man, this wealth tax wouldn't have even imp- impacted her, as I'm going to show you. But this is the company they keep. When it comes to the conservatives, when it comes to the liberals, this is the company they keep. They're always around incredibly wealthy individuals. This is the worldview that they take on. And there's always that potential there that if they, you know, lose their next... Uh, bid for re-election, that they can move on to a cushy job where they're making a lot of money with one of these wealthy individuals that they have come into contact with since becoming an MP. MPs earn a base salary of $182,600 and cabinet ministers earn an additional $87,200. Monsef would be earning $269,800 plus other perks such as a living allowance while in Ottawa. Her hot mic left some ministers and MPs giggling in the House of Commons, as we heard. One last thing here. The minister's salary is more than four times the median household income in her Ontario riding of Peterborough, Kawartha. According to the city of Peterborough, median household income there is $58,127. This shows you somebody who is completely out of touch with her own riding and with reality. To vote this down really shows you where your allegiances lie. McLean's Writing here, the comments smacked down an NDP motion that supported a wealth tax, specifically a 1% levy on income earned over $20 million. Like, this really, guys, is the bare minimum. This is almost nothing. A 1% levy on income earned over $20 million? This, is, this isn't even wealth. This is on income earned over $20 million. Yet they still shot it down. New Democrats only found dance partners in the Green Party and 292 votes against. Only the NDP and the Greens voted for this. Let me show you some of the names here. I will link to all this below the video. You can go through this yourself, see how your MP voted. But uh, a couple highlights here, or at least one big highlight I want to note. Aaron O'Toole, conservative leader who absolutely is opposed to a wealth tax, just didn't vote. Now, I'm not sure why. I'm sure he has some excuse. But here is a guy who is pretending to now be a friend to unions. He is, which is strategically brilliant for the conservatives to do, to try and be the, the uh, rhetorically try and be the pro-union party while the liberals continue to work against uh, organized labor. But the conservatives are not a friend of, of, <laughs> of labor. But Aaron O'Toole here may try and avoid some votes like this, votes that he know uh, that he knows on things like this are going to be voted down anyways. So by him avoiding it, he doesn't have to claim or doesn't have to admit to voting against a wealth tax because he didn't actually technically vote against it because he knew his caucus was going to vote against it. But th- this is the kind, the kind of games that these people play. So um, also just on that point. Aaron O'Toole will urge to explain past support for anti-union bills. So just remember, if you see any new headlines or any new, new news about Aaron O'Toole uh, being in support of unions or 
having some language about supporting, you know, organized labor, he's completely full of crap. This man has no record on that at all. He's just doing this rhetorically to try and be uh, the foe to to uh, Trudeau's liberals. But you can go through here, look at the other votes or didn't votes. You see here, everyone in the NDP voted except for um, one person who wasn't there or didn't vote. And same with the Greens. Scroll down. The Bloc Quebecois also all voted against it. Liberals all voted against it or didn't show up. And uh, except for one liberal. And Greens all voted for it. Really disgusting. Really disgusting. From Jacobin here, Canada's richest 1% control 26% of our wealth. 87 of the country's richest families together hold more wealth than the bottom 12 million Canadians combined. Each of these richest families hold, on average, 4,448 times the wealth of the typical family. Yet you have liberals and conservatives complaining about the deficit. Oh, we held people too much during the pandemic. We gave people too much financial support during this pandemic. Now they got to pay back. The wealthiest, though, no. People that make over 20 million or large corporations profiting off the pandemic, no, they're perfectly fine. Leave them alone. Lower income people, middle income people, you got to pay up. Disgusting. Disgusting. Understand which parties are on your side. The NDP and the, and the Greens actually fight for the average Canadian. Liberals, Tories, don't. Some data here on a wealth tax showing you how much support it has. This is from Abacus Data. New tax to pay for recovery. A new wealth tax on the richest multi-millionaires and billionaires has a majority of support. 48% strongly support it. 28% support it. Only 8% oppose. 5% strongly oppose. And 11% don't know. And a new tax on corporations who have made very large profits during the pandemic. 41% strongly support. 32% support. 10% oppose, 5% strongly oppose, and 11% don't know. The vast majority of Canadians support a wealth tax on the richest millionaires and billionaires and on large companies that have made profits during the pandemic. Last data point here. This is by party. So new taxes to pay for recovery, a new wealth tax on the richest multimillionaires and billionaires. So people that voted for the Liberals in 2019 strongly support a wealth tax at 59%, 28% support. Conservative voters, 42% strongly support the wealth tax, 28% support. NDP voters, 61% strongly support, 30% support. Green Party voters, 59% strongly support, 29% support. And Bloc Quebecois, 44% strongly support and 22% support. Everybody is in support of a wealth tax. Yet, you just had a 292 MPs vote against it. I believe only 27 voting for it. So, 27 to 292. I'll link to all this below the video. Go through this, check out how your MP voted, and maybe send them an email. Call them. Tell them that you're disappointed, that you're watching, and that you understand right now that they are not fighting in your in your best interest, and they are actually there to simply represent those that already have money and already have power.